As the world celebrates International Women's Day on March 8, Belize commemorates the global event with a forum taking a critical look at the women's movement and gender justice. Two areas of discussion are the Women's Domestic Act and the gender policy. One of the co-organizers of the event is PETAL, a local organization that promotes empowerment for lesbian and bisexual women. One of the things is sexual reproductive health issues that um, we did a survey and we found out that this is what um, women would like us to more speak on the aspect of, especially where it concerns legal issues as to how the laws affect them or don't affect them. Um, also on, the, um, on doing relationship issues, to so speak on it. As it relates to the gender policy, uh, do you think this is very inclusive of, of women from the LGBT community? Do you think that the issues affecting women are properly you know, included, addressed in there? Well, um, to some extent, that is the reason why we are looking at this um, forum and want that to be to come out more so that we, we know that the churches are, are clamoring about the gender policy and things like that, but going, looking at life and things like that, and, and something that I have always said, that we are citizens and this is a hu we are human. It's a, it, Belize has signed on to many conventions and um, as, as human beings and of this um, country, we should have the same rights as all citizens and not, uh, and not just be labeled oh, uh, an LGBT person, but as a human being and a citizen of this country. And that is why the discussion of gender justice remains a priority. It is, after all, a human right. Every woman and girl is entitled to live in dignity and in freedom without any fear. Gender justice is at the center of development, poverty reduction, and crucial to achieving human progress. And as Michelle Irving explains, it is also about power and responsibility between women and men at home and across all other spaces. When we talk about gender justice, we talk about a system that is created by the family, the community, the market and the state to ensure that women, men, boys and girls are represented equally and not one over the other. So basically I am looking in different areas, I'm focusing on four areas, immigration, HIV, AIDS, education, and the justice system to see where we are um, as it relates to achieving gender justice. What would you say are some of the challenges um, as it relates to gender justice in the areas of uh, HIV, for example? When we look at HIV, for example, our national numbers are showing, for example, that more men in Belize are infected than women. However, where I work in the St. Creek District, we have a ratio of three women to one man that is affected. So we look at it, in, in our view, it's the feminization of HIV that has continued for quite some time. Not only um, is that so, but we also have the district that has the highest cases of deaths from AIDS. So we want to get down to maybe the community level to understand what is going on in the communities and then to be able to sit and sensibly plot a way forward. When women die, they leave children most of the time. Children grow up with the trauma of their parents' death. The trauma of their parents' death left untreated um, put them at risk to repeat those behaviors, to also put them at risk to be HIV positive or to have some early pregnancy or to have some other you know, um, issue as well. For the young men, sometimes they're at risk to join a gang. They're at risk to commit criminal activity because they are traumatized from the experiences that they're having. So we have to also understand the ripple effect of what happened and the issue of stigma and discrimination. Statistics show that one out of every three women globally is affected by violence during her lifetime, a situation that is more dismal in developing countries. The World Health Organization says that roughly 38% of murders of women are committed by by a male intimate partner. For this reason, specific pieces of legislation are needed for better protection. For Belize, the Domestic Violence Act is one such piece of legislation. There are increased penalties for breach. There are increased categories of persons who can apply. Um, you have tenancy orders, occupation orders. For example, the tenancy order is ordering somebody to continue paying the rent because you cannot put a family and children on the street. And the occupation order is used in situations, I don't want to use the word severe because each case is on its own merits, but in cases where you have a domestic violence situation, um, one of the um, parties can be ordered to actually leave the home. 
Now, remembering that the family court doesn't have jurisdiction over the ownership of property or who has shares in what, but certainly the family court has full jurisdiction over who's to live in a house for what period of time, under what circumstances, because of the attitude of protecting the family. You know, um, you, in, the, in the States they call it restraining order. In Belize we call it protection order. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco.